Hi everybody, Mother Jamie here, looking a little worse for wear. Uh, I don't know what's worse, the Pepe Le Pew stripes in my hair or this. It kind of reminds me of that classic 1989 Batman movie with Michael Keaton and Kim Basinger as Vicki Vale and Jack Nicholson as the Joker and Prince did the music. You remember that one? And the, it gets really funny because as the Joker is terrorizing Gotham City, the news anchors can no longer wear cosmetics or, or any chemicals. And so they start looking worse and worse. And I tried to find a screenshot of it. So But as some of our appearances uh, deteriorate the longer we are away from the hairdresser, and in my case, I can't, haven't been able to wear eye makeup in months because I had some kind of infection and the eye appointment got postponed till the end of May. But anyway, as we start looking worse and worse and a little bit more comical and um, uh, the spring and outside just looks more and more beautiful as the days get longer and warmer and more and more things bloom. So at least we've got that going for us. So we need to be looking out the window and not in the mirror. But, and of course, this is the Easter season. And as you know, Easter is not a day, it is a season and it lasts for 50 days until the Feast of Pentecost. And if you kind of forgot that, don't feel bad because my own mother asked me the other day, how many days is Easter again? And she was raised a good Methodist and now she's Episcopalian. So, you know, don't feel bad if you got a little fuzzy about that 50 days. And this is the biggest feasting season of the whole year. We just can't say hallelujah too many times in the church during this season. So this is it, the pinnacle of our celebration of our of the feast of the resurrection and of the salvific power of Jesus Christ. Now, for those of us who are in the lectionary tradition, the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Easter, which we always also call Low Sunday because nobody bothers to go to church because they've gone so many times during Holy Week and Easter, is always the gospel reading of what we affectionately refer to as Doubting Thomas, although the word doubt is not part of that passage. And in fact, that title, Doubting Thomas, misses the whole point of the story. So, uh, if you need to brush up on that, that is uh, John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Now, Thomas was not there when the disciples got to behold the risen Christ. And so when they gather a week later, he says, unless I touch the wound, see the wound, unless I experience this for myself, I will not believe. And then Jesus appears and says, go ahead, Thomas, feel away. And he says, my Lord and my God. Now, it is important to remember that in John's gospel, his use of the word believe means to be in relationship with. It does not mean like we think of believe as agree to a theological claim. To believe is to be in relationship with. So what Thomas is saying is that unless I have direct experience of the risen Christ, I can't be in relationship with him. And equally important is the means by which Thomas is in relationship with the risen Christ. It is through direct contact, direct experience with Jesus's wounds. We cannot fail to notice 
and appreciate the significance of that. It's not about beholding the risen Christ in splendor. It's not about obeisance to some sort of grand superpower. It is by putting his hand in the pierced side of Jesus. And notice that even though Jesus, now the risen Christ, has been transformed. Notice that in all these post-resurrection appearances, people don't recognize Jesus at first. And then he starts talking and they're like, oh my gosh. So his appearance has been transformed and yet the wounds are still there. That tells us something. That tells us something important about God. And it tells us something extremely important about the role of suffering in relationship. Now, we don't like suffering. Like Daffy Duck says, I'm not like other people. I don't like pain. It hurts me. And we have elaborate means of avoiding pain. Now, we can't help but suffer when those we love suffer. As someone says, you're only as happy as your saddest child. When your baby hurts, you hurt. But if you have the heart of God, then if anyone suffers, if any creature suffers, if any part of God's creation suffers, then there is suffering. But we humans can't handle that. We, our hearts, our psyches, we don't have the capacity to hold all of the world's suffering. It takes the heart of God to do that. We can only hold a little bit. And we have elaborate defense mechanisms to avoid even that. Avoidance, denial, projection, scapegoating, uh, addictions, you name it, uh, blame the victim. You know, we have all kinds of ways of trying, of, uh, and very elaborate justifications and rationalizations for distancing ourselves from the suffering of others. It's just what we do as humans. But as we grow in our capacity to towards the kingdom, we grow, we can grow, in our maturity and our spiritual wisdom, in we can grow in our capacity to towards the heart of God, towards solidarity with the sufferings of others. Now, our first inclination uh, is to kind of be like Scarlett O'Hara. I'm a bit this way about how I'm going to pay for sending my son to college. I won't think about that now. I'll go crazy if I do. I'll think about that tomorrow. After all, tomorrow is another day. So let's go shopping. But we can't go shopping unless it's for necessities. We can't do a lot of the things we normally do to kind of avoid and deny. And so we are given an opportunity here in this season to grow spiritually, to make some changes, and to increase our capacity to have more of the heart of God. First of all, we have the opportunity to break some bad habits. Let's face it, we all have more than we need, and we all acquire more than we need. Um, even, you know, some people are compulsive shoppers, but even those of us who aren't enjoy, you know, a trip to go see, you know, uh, to the stores just to browse. And so suddenly when we can't do that, we realize, well, you know, it, we can break some of those habits. It's, it's, we're told it takes 21 days to break a habit. 
So we can get out of the habit of just, you know, doing shopping or, or doing other things that we do to avoid, you know, the taking a hard look at, at the reality of our circumstances and the circumstances of the world. Secondly, as evidenced by my appearance, it's getting real up in here. I mean, allow the deterioration of your uh, creature comforts and appearance to be a metaphor for some of those buffers, creature comforts, means by which we shelter ourselves and buffer ourselves from the suffering out there. Allow the breakdown of that to be a sign and a symbol that our real selves are being revealed and that our relationship with God is going to come from an interior experience. And so as we are deprived of some of our external experiences, it gives us the opportunity to focus inward and increase our capacity to sit still and quiet in solidarity and hold the suffering of others and the world. It takes practice to do that. It takes practice to sit still and open ourselves up long enough to receive God's grace and enable our hearts to be more and more open and in solidarity with others. And finally, if you are struggling right now, if you are saying, wait a minute, I can't be in solidarity with the sufferings of others because I've got my own suffering going right now. If you are in that place, then I strongly recommend that you spend some time reading and rereading the 16th Psalm, Psalm 16, which is also one of the lectionary readings for this week. Remember, the Levites were the priestly class. They did not have property or inheritance, so they didn't have some of those um, financial means of security in that culture. And so the 16th Psalm kind of comes from that place of um, that reliance upon God to get you through. And there's some beautiful, um, it's a beautiful psalm. So I recommend that you make that your song and uh, as you seek solace and help in your suffering. And finally, um, may the beauty of this spring season, may the warm sunshine and the beauty of spring and the promises of this feasting season of Easter keep you full of hope, full of joy, recognizing that paradoxically, it is not sitting with the suffering that brings us down, but rather paradoxically, the way God works is it is as it is actually through suffering that we understand that ultimate joy and well-being, which is what is meant by Jesus saying, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Peace is not the absence of conflict in this sense, but it is that interior reassurance of well-being, not contingent upon any circumstances in this life. So, until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and stay connected in the bonds of love. Bye-bye now.